Well, this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. I am excited about where God is taking us in these weeks of Pentecost. It's still Pentecost. Amen. And uh, it does not matter that the day of Pentecost has gone. It is yet Pentecost. And we want you to be a part of living the Pentecost lifestyle for the rest of your life. Amen. We don't just want you to be a part of something that was an event. It changed the world, praise the Lord. Uh, but we do not want you to just focus on the one day. We want you to focus on a life of Pentecost. I'm Bishop Coletta Vaughn, and it's beautiful here in Detroit, Michigan. And I'm excited. I have callers on the line uh, that have joined me by phone conference. And I have those of you that are here live with me on Facebook. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood and I'm excited. I'm so excited. You know, Pentecost changed the world. It actually changed the world. And if you will engage Holy Spirit, uh, in your everyday life. He will change your life as well. So welcome all of you that are joining me. God bless you. Would you please click and share? Good morning. Good morning, pastors. Good morning, men and women of God. Good morning. Hello, uh, Pastor Constance. Good morning, TJ. Good morning, my feathers. Good morning, Renee. Hey, Dr. Kathy Hawkins Jones. Good morning, Deacon Emma Radden. Good morning. I am here. Good morning, Elder House. Hey, Pastor Barbara. Good morning, Dr. Gwendolyn. Good morning. Good morning, Sandra. Good morning, uh, Dr. Golden. Praise God. Oh, my God. It's good. You guys are central. I love y'all. <laughs> Amen. And you know what I want you to do? I want you to make sure that you click and share. Would you please? Let's get the numbers up early because, oh my God, the Holy Spirit has been talking all morning and I want to share with you what he has said to me. You know, living the Pentecost lifestyle is uh, a, a phenomenal life. You know, it's just like for real crazy. <laughs> There's never a boring moment <laughs> in the Holy Spirit. And you know what's so crazy is that it has nothing to do with your personality. It has nothing to do with your temperament that you can, you can live the Pentecost life. You can live the Holy Ghost life. And it, it takes you places you never dreamed of going. <laughs> it's crazy. Praise God. Good morning, my Latanya. That's my darling. Amen. Good morning, the Jemison. Good morning, Dr. Patricia Morrison. Good morning, India. Good morning, Overseer Robin. Hey, Chris, all the way from LA. Hey, sugar. God bless you. We're going to see you. Soon. I'm still coming. Amen. It's a crazy life. Oh my God, the Holy Ghost life is amazing. Claudette Goodwin, good morning. Hey, Taka, good morning, saints. Good morning. Come on, join me. Erica from Jamaica. Come on, I'm on my way to you. Grenade Bordeaux, good morning, darling. Good morning, good morning. Hello, my granddad, my grandboo, Dana. Hey, preacher. I'm Listen, I'm not playing with y'all. <laughs> Hello, hello, good morning. Come on in. Come on, pray, praise God. Bless you. Hey, just Sarah. I want to get it in pots. I'm just, I'm just gonna be honest. <laughs> I'm like, woo, I gotta come and just sit down and enjoy my beautiful sister Ruthie, the psalmist of Israel. Praise God. Hey, Andrew Rose, good morning. <laughs> Sarah, hey, y'all stay with me. Don't go nowhere today. I promise you. It's going to change your life. Would you please click and share? Let's greet the Holy Spirit this morning. Good morning, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Would you type it in right quickly? Praise God. Australia. Hey, my sweet Leah. God bless you. Good morning, Juliet. Dr. Juliet. Dr. Sharon. Hey, Elder Nettie. Powerful, powerful Bible study last night. Deacon Cheryl, God bless you. Amen. Oh, my God. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Come on, let's do it. Good morning, Elder Jefferson, all the way in St. Louis. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Let's write it in right now. Praise God. 
Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning. Let's acknowledge his presence. Oh my God, He's a, he is our friend. He is my closest. He is my most extravagant. He is my most amazing friend, Holy Spirit. Oh my God. And I, as I began to get to know him, I, I, I realized through the scriptures and through our intimacy that he led me to Jesus, <laughs> that he drew me to Christ. Amen. And that he keeps me in the will of God. Come on. He keeps us. Amen. Hallelujah. In the will of God. He keeps us there. Hallelujah. And he keeps us in the will of God. And he knows how to how to make sure that we do not uh, stray away from his divine will for our lives. And let me just tell you something. Again, I want to say to you that this has nothing to do with your personality or your temperament or your giftings. It's all Holy Spirit. It's pure Holy Spirit. It is pure Holy Spirit. It is Holy Spirit life. It's he that is led by the Spirit of God. We are the sons of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are the sons of God. And he, when we are led by the Spirit of God, when he leads us, when we have such an intimacy with him that we are totally relying upon him, he will take us into amazing spaces. <laughs> Good morning. God bless you. Thanks, Sabrina. You know I love you for that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Lena. Good morning. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Don, Pastor Donna. Good morning. Good morning. Come on, Warmsley. Let's go. Come on, Latanya. Woo -woo! Come on, a, a mink mink. All right. I love it. <laughs> Hallelujah, Pamela. Good morning. Keisha, good morning. Joyce McFadden, hallelujah. Good morning. God is so, so good. Hey, Jean Glover, God bless you. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes, God. Janice Warren, good morning. Good morning, Patricia Brown. Good to see you from the DMV. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to Lashonda. Amen. My bishop, your grace. <laughs> Bishop Herbert Jackson, God bless you, sir. Welcome. Hey, Juana, God bless you. Hey, Anita Newby, the prophet of worship in the name, Lord Jesus. Oh, my God. Mm. Antoine, good morning, sir. You know, I'm constantly praying for you. I'm constantly calling your name out for the miracles. Loretta, good morning. Keep joining. Would you click and share? Please, let's share. Hey, Linda. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. I'm so excited. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's join. Let's click. Let's invite. Let's share. Let them know that Bishop Vaughn is on live after Pentecost. We're going to be here for, well, this is week number four. So we actually have about 26 total weeks of Pentecost before we get into Advent. So every Wednesday morning, I'll be right here talking to you about Holy Spirit. We are still in the season of Pentecost. Ah, Rosh Hashanah. Ooh, the Ruah of God. <laughs> so, you know, I get very, very excited about Holy Spirit. I get very excited about what he's doing in the earth today. I get very excited because very few people are talking about Holy Spirit. Very few people are talking about the boldness and the power and the ingenuity of Holy Spirit. He's so brilliant. He's so wise. He is the smartest person in the universe. Praise God. He knows everything about everything. He knows absolutely everything about everything. Holy Spirit knows everything about everything. <laughs> He's wise, praise God. He's the genius mind of the Trinity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, come on in here, Bridget. Hey, Anne Juan. Hey, Mama Tracy. God bless you. Oh, my God. He is amazing. Erica, he's amazing. Holy Spirit is so wise. He is the spirit of truth. He is the spirit of truth. And he, he knows everything. Oh, my God. Okay. So I get too excited. They said, oh, you got to calm down a little bit. I don't know if I can. <laughs> when I tapped 
in to Holy Spirit, when I tapped in to who he is and I tapped in to his amazing wisdom, his amazing power, let me tell you, you can live intimately with the Holy Spirit in such a way that you'll never miss it again. You'll, you can come because he leads us, he binds us. He is the advantage that you and I need. Praise God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever it's being viewed. We thank you for the mighty power of Jesus being in our midst. Oh, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you now for the mighty invasion of Holy Spirit Holy Spirit, invade this moment, invade this space, invade our thinking, invade our thoughts, invade our lives, invade, Lord, this day. Holy Spirit, come and invade. We thank you for the mighty invasion of Holy Spirit right now in every facet of our lives. We thank you for the activation of dreams and visions. We thank you for the activation, oh God, of futures, oh my God, that will leave marks on our generation. Oh my God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will glorify Jesus in our lives, that you will make a boast of him in us. Glory to God that the knowledge of Christ is diffused through us. So Holy Spirit, you are the wisdom. You are the knowledge. You are the in the ingenious, the genius. You are the, the creator. You are the creative. You are everything that we need. You are our advantage. And we thank you. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Jesus. We give you glory, Father. Hallelujah. Bless everyone that sees this and spark a fire. Spark a fire in them. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Spark a fire. Oh, my God. Spark a flame of fire fire in our lives. Oh, yes, God, that we do not live mundane or mediocre or regular normal lives, but we live spirit lives. We live Holy Ghost Pentecost lives. <laughs> oh, in Jesus' mighty name, praise God. Oh, Rabbi, <laughs> he knows everything about everything. He knows everything about everything. Praise God. He knows everything about everything. There is nothing that Holy Spirit does not know. <laughs> so can you imagine having a best friend that knows everything about everything? How amazing is that? How mighty is that? How powerful is that? Oh, Rasha <laughs> Amen. God bless you, your grace, Bishop Stephen. God bless you. Uh, come on, click and share. Let's come on in. Hey, evangelist, let's come in. Good morning. God bless you. Come on, Tanita. <coughs> Amen. The gate crasher, supernatural. That's why you're doing what you're doing. It's the Holy Spirit. Hey, got nothing to do. Let me tell you something. We spend a whole lot of time about nothing. Oh, what happened in our childhood? What happened here? What happened there? What, how they treat? Hey, y'all don't understand. Oh, my God. You don't understand that it's all a part of a phenomenal plan that God has for your life, that eventually you'll tap in to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> he knows everything about everything. There is nothing that is known that is not known by the Holy Spirit. And the enemy's trick is to keep you from this information. The enemy's plan is to make you think that your life is about you. That's the enemy's plan, is to make you think that your life is about you, about your circumstances, about your childhood, about how you grew up, about what you didn't have. That's the enemy's plan, to have you to focus, to have you focus, to use all your resources, to use all your time, to use all that you have upon trying to solve these problems and resolve these things. And, try, and before you know it, you look up, you're 60, 70, 80 years old, and you have not done what God put you in the earth to do. And so that's the enemy's strategy. 
That is his strategy, to have you to fulfill the lust of your flesh, to have you to fulfill the lust of your flesh. And that does not mean sin. It's the lust of your flesh. That, oh, I, I don't know what happened. I don't know why that happened to me. I don't know why I had to go through that. I, so that's just the lust of your flesh. That's all. And so uh, the Holy Spirit wants you to focus on kingdom. The Holy Spirit wants you to focus on something so much bigger than you. Praise God. But if you are not led by the Spirit, you will always focus on yourself. You focus on your heart. You focus on your pain. You focus on your life. You focus on your tears. You focus on your breakups. You focus on your ne negativities. You focus on your little liabilities. You focus on all those things, the lust of your flesh. But when you tap into the life of the Holy Spirit, that stuff is so minuscule. That stuff is so small. It's so small. And believe it or not, it's so irrelevant. It's nothing. It has nothing to do with nothing. Whatever it is that you and I have gone through, it has nothing to do with the greatness. It has nothing to do with future and destiny. It has nothing to do with it. But the enemy would love for you to focus your whole life and get stuck in the valley of regret and get stuck in the valley of remorse and sadness and questioning why this happened to me, why I got to do this, why I didn't that because the enemy wants you to be distracted from your purpose and distracted from your destiny. That's the purpose of the Holy Spirit is to take you above that. Hey, glory to God. The Holy Spirit takes us above all of that, the noise, <laughs> the noise in your mind. Holy Spirit takes you above the noise in your circumstances. The Holy Spirit, he takes us above the noise in our weaknesses, in that mini me that speaks in our mind and tell us you ain't gonna never do nothing. You go, you vacillate from highs and lows and, and you have all of these dynamics about you and that's because you went through something. Oh, come on, the Holy Spirit, he knows all about that. He knows all about that. And that's even the greater because he wants you and I to rely upon him. And he wants you and I to trust him to take us above that, to use us beyond that. And so I tell you, man, I don't even talk about that foolishness. <laughs> I don't even talk about that. What I've been through, I don't even talk about that. That's so ridiculous. It's so minor. It's so little. And you'll always draw little people that want to hear it. You'll always draw little-minded people that want to hear your sorrows and your sadness. And they want to hear what you went through. Come on, forget that stupid stuff. Hey, Amen. Listen to me. I'm telling you about the Holy Spirit life. The Holy Spirit life is so amazing. The Holy Spirit life is so amazing. Praise God. Come on in and join me this morning. And so I want to tell you something that he said to me. Good morning, Dr. Frank. I want you, I want, I want you, to, I want you will focus on yourself. You will always fulfill the lust of your flesh if you are not focused on the Holy Spirit, if you are not living the Holy Spirit life, if you're not living the Pentecost lifestyle, let me tell you something. <laughs> oh my God. But then when you begin to tap into the wisdom and you begin to tap into the personality of the Holy Spirit, see, your personality is probably going to be uh, adverse to the personality of the Holy Spirit, your temperament, all the things you've gone through, they've created this character, this caricature of you. <laughs> and so, so it, nobody wants you. They want Jesus. <laughs> nobody cares about you. Nobody cares about me. It's just Jesus and the rest of us. And so when you start, you know, making your stuff so big and you start making your personality, your temperament, I didn't have a father. I didn't have this. I didn't have that. I didn't have no mama. I didn't have no food. I had no oatmeal. I had no etch sketch I had no, and when you start focusing on that. I lost my husband. I lost my father. I lost this. I lost that. And, and you start focusing on your losses. And you start focusing on your pain and you start focusing on your circumstances and then you start minimizing who you are and you start minimizing and you starting those things become maximum while you become minimum. Ah. And so don't nobody want to know all that. You just keep drawing little people. You keep drawing dwarfs and midgets to you. Mm. You'll never draw giants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because giants don't want to hear about it. <laughs> so he gives us the Holy Spirit 
Glory to God to give us the advantage over that, to give us the advantage. Glory to God, because we all got a story. We all got some stuff that we could be talking about, but that ain't what we want to be talking about because Holy Spirit is doing something so phenomenal in the earth. Glory to God. And so you can make a decision. You can choose life and go with the Holy Spirit, or you can choose death and focus on the lust of your flesh, your pains, your hurts, your temperaments, your losses. You can focus on all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah, Sean, you have choice. <laughs> you have volition, or you can do something great in your generation. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. <laughs> And so I'm telling you right now, Rushabaya, <laughs> you must ignore the noise of your littleness. Hey, come on. You must ignore the noise of your littleness. Somebody better say that. You have to ignore the noise of your many, many self. You have to ignore the noise of your temperament, of your personality, of your weaknesses, of your challenges, of your circumstances. Holy Ghost gives us the power to ignore the noise. <laughs> Woo! He raised Jesus from the dead. <laughs> Certainly he will raise you. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, you just don't know what happened to me. And guess what? I don't want to know. <laughs> hey, God, we could all sit down and commiserate about what happened to all of us. Uh, we've all suffered some losses. We've all had some pains. Uh, we've all had some rejections, some of that. We've had all of that. But how do you transcend it? You transcend it in the light of the spirit. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and I'm telling you, when you begin to live the spirit life, when you begin to live the Holy Spirit life, when you begin to see the bigness of the Holy Spirit, when you begin to see how big Holy Spirit is, when you understand that the purpose and the design of Holy Spirit in our lives is to create in us, my God, vision and purpose and dreams, uh, my God, assignments, things that, that don't come from you, things that come from the mind of God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody ought to say, ignore the noise. Ignore the noise of your littleness. Ignore the noise of your challenges. Ignore the noise of your personality. Ignore the noise of your temperament. Ignore that. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will quicken your mortal bodies. Glory to God. Woo! My God. Ah, <laughs> Robo, Shaba, Atanda. Ignore the noise of your littleness. I was looking at Paul in Galatians, and he said, What has happened to you? What has bewitched you? You started well, but now you're running off the. Wait, what? You mad? You offended? What are you talking about? Uh, well, you don't know my childhood. And, and uh, since Pentecost, hallelujah. See, that, that makes me try to ask the question, what did you really receive the Holy Ghost when you believed? What did you receive? If you are still operating there, if you start still operating as the rejected child, if you're still operating as the orphan, if you're still operating uh, as the one don't nobody like, uh, did you receive the Holy Ghost when you believed? Uh, that makes me question, uh, oh my God, uh, if you're still operating out of that system, uh, if you are still wanting people to regard that and respect that. Okay, so you so you had three marriages. Uh, uh, so you had a baby out of wedlock. You're still there. Did you receive the Holy Ghost? Since you believed, then you have the power to ignore the noise. You have the ability. You have the power. You have the power to ignore that. But you have to choose to not fulfill the lust of your flesh. See, some of y'all think that Paul is only talking about sex sexual sin, because some of y'all just stuck there, <laughs> but the lust of your flesh, the desires, the whims of your flesh are 
far, far greater than just sex. It's about you. It's about me. Somebody that do me right. You don't understand. And you blame everything about you on everybody else. And you never understand that you are standing at the cusp. You're standing at the precipice. You're standing on the verge of greatness. You're standing on the verge of, of doing something in your generation that nobody else has done before. But because you want them for Feel the lust of your flesh. You want people to respect your offense. You want people to respect your rejected childhood. You want people to respect your abandonment. No, no, and no. Have you received the Holy Ghost? <laughs> Ooh, rabbi, shabbat, oh, Baba. Oh, ha, 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 ignore the noise uh, of your littleness. Uh, ignore the noise uh, of your weaknesses. Uh, ignore the noise of your mistakes. Uh, ignore the noise of your abortion. Ignore the noise. Ignore the noise uh, of your abuse. Ignore the noise. Uh, ignore the noise uh, of your of your missed opportunities. Ignore the noise. And Holy Spirit. Hiya, the one that raised Jesus from the dead. The worst possible circumstance that could be is death, 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 death without help, death without resurrection, death, death without redemption. And Holy Spirit said, this ain't nothing for me. I got you, Jesus. <laughs> Woo! Ha ya ha 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 ha! You just want everybody to get back to where you were. Tell them about you stuck, baby. Your clock is stuck. That's why offense is so damnable and diabolical because it keeps you stuck. It keeps you from being able. Most of you walking around are just offended. Most of you, come on, most you just offended. You're offended. You're mad. You're angry. You know, you try to cover it up with makeup and try to cover it up with success, but you're angry. You're offended, and all that does is keep you stuck. Listen to what the Holy Spirit said to me. And I'm going to give you some scripture in just a minute. But listen to what he woke me up with this morning. He said, I am the architect of dreams and visions. I said, what? He said, I, the Holy Spirit, I am the architect of dreams and visions. He kura sabah. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, 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 ah. I said, what? <laughs> uh, 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 uh. I am the architect. Somebody write that down. The Holy Spirit said this to me. He said, I am the architect of dreams and visions. I am the architect. And if the people would listen to me and rely on me <laughs> oh, on a daily basis, I will help carve out a destiny for them mm, mm, mm. that absolutely defies their weaknesses, their circumstances, their complaints. I will carve out a destiny because I am the architect of dreams and visions. Oh my God, would you click and share? Everybody needs to hear that. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you still mad? <laughs> Yeah, you still angry, you still respond, you still reacting. You don't know the Holy Spirit, not the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. <laughs> oh, you know the church Holy Ghost, but you don't know the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Glory to God. He said, I am the architect of dreams and visions. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, oh my God. <laughs> ah, yes, God. <laughs> I am the architect of dreams. And then I said, Holy Spirit, is this you talking? He said, tell the people <laughs> uh, that they are focused on their weaknesses and not their greatness. They're focused on their mistakes. <laughs> They're focused on their on their their circumstances, and they're not focusing on where I'm taking them, which is into their destiny and greatness. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you when I looked at that thing in in Acts chapter number two, and you might want to get that for just a moment because I I saw it in a different way when he said that to me. I saw it totally different. <laughs> 
He said, Joel, uh, this is what Joel the prophet prophesied in Joel chapter number two. Praise God. And then Peter repeated it on the day of Pentecost. He said, and this is spoken, Acts 2 and 16, by the prophet Joel, that it shall come to pass that in the last days, I will pour out my spirit <laughs> upon all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy. Ain't got nothing to do with whether you're a prophet. Ain't got nothing to do with whether you are abandoned. Has nothing to do with whether or not you are only child or you're an orphan or you were adopted or you were rejected or you were violated or you were abused. He said, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, I'm going to take you past your temperament. I'm going to take you past your weakness. I'm going to take you beyond uh, all of those limiting circumstances when my spirit comes upon you you shall prophesy what does that mean you will be able to discern future things you'll be able to tap in not to your past but to your future mm. some of y'all are locked in your past you are stuck and you can't get out because you need an outpouring of the holy spirit hallelujah oh the holy spirit is like liquid oil it forces you it moves you out of the stuck place let me prophesy to somebody right now it is time for you to receive this holy spirit and come out of that stuck place your stuck conversations ah uh, yes 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 uh, your your limiting circumstances uh, you are stuck you're stuck you want people to respect what you went through. You want people to honor that. No, no, and no. I got something so great for you. He said, when my spirit comes upon you in the last days, he said, your sons and daughters will prophesy. You, your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. My God, watch this. And upon my men servants and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. Whoa, I said, whoa, I never saw that like that. I never understood that, that the Holy Spirit, when he comes up on us, see, we want the Holy Spirit and our agony. We want the Holy Spirit and our hurt. We want the Holy Spirit and our offense. We want the Holy Spirit and our limitations. We want the, see, listen, listen, let me tell you something. They're not parallel. You, you got to walk in one or the other. You're either walking in the spirit or you're walking in the flesh. It ain't no in between. You're either walking in the spirit or you're walking in the flesh. You're either walking in the spirit or you're walking in the flesh. Again, we think flesh is all sin. No, flesh is just uh, the Lord part of you. Glory to God. It's just the lower part of you. It's your base abilities. It's your base nature. You're either walking in the spirit or you're walking in the flesh. If you're walking in the flesh, you cannot obey the spirit. If you're walking in the spirit, you will not focus on the flesh. And the flesh is not just sin. The flesh is your limitations. The flesh is your small you. Your flesh is your base you. Your flesh is your hurt you. Your flesh is your abandoned you. You have to make a decision. I'm going to walk in the spirit and I will not fulfill the lust of my flesh because when I walk in the spirit, I'm walking in the supernatural. I'm walking above myself. I'm walking beyond my abilities. I'm walking beyond my mistakes. I'm walking beyond my limitations. I'm walking beyond my childhood. I'm walking beyond that mistake that I made when I had the baby, when I had the abortion, when I when I robbed the bank, when I, when I sold drugs, whatever it is. Holy Spirit doesn't matter. He said, if you'll give me an opportunity to just carve out with you and walk with you and guide you on a daily basis, you will not fulfill the lust of your flesh. You will not do the things that your base nature calls for. You'll be able to ignore the noise of your littleness. You'll be able to prophesy. You'll be able to do things that you never, ever considered that you would be able to do. But you have to receive this Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh, Rabbi. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 Holy Spirit says, I am the architect 
of dreams and visions. I am the architect. I'm trying to give you dreams and visions, but you keep telling me what happened to you. You keep trying to talk about it. And, and the enemy is so, so, so shrewd. The enemy is so shrewd that he puts emotions that help to remind you of how little and how dirty and what they called you stupid and nappy head and all them things. It, it, it puts, it keeps that in. And so you think that that emotion is your reality. That emotion is a distraction to your reality. That emotion is a distraction to your reality. That's not your, who you are. Not if you have received the Holy Spirit since you believe. So God spoke to me. He said, I, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, I am the architect of dreams and visions. <laughs> Somebody write that down. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am the architect of dreams and visions. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And listen, not only does he give us the he gives us the plan. Glory to God. The architect is the one that, that designs the plans. Mm and makes them visible. Glory to God. And, and, and when the Holy Spirit begins to design uh, those dreams and visions, it's amazing to me how great you and I be. And it's not about us. It's it, because the beauty of us doing this is that we did it by the Spirit. Somebody said, well, how did you do it? How? You say, I did it by the Holy Ghost. I did it by the Spirit. Well, I, do you have this kind of training? No. Did you go to school for this? No. Well, you must have had a perfect life. No. How did you do it? I did it by the Holy Ghost. I did this by the Holy Ghost. I did it by the Spirit of God. I never could have done it. I never could have done it with my lifestyle. I never could have done it with my background. I didn't have the resources. I didn't even have the personality. I didn't even have the temperament for people to like me. I didn't even like myself. Oh, but when the spirit of the Lord came upon me and I developed a lifestyle with the Holy Spirit, he gave me dreams and visions. Glory to God. And then he gave me the passion and the purpose of my life. And when I began to walk with the Holy Spirit and began to develop this intimacy with the Holy Spirit. He helped me to carve this out. He told me to do this, and I did it. He told me to go this way, and I went. He told me don't go, and I didn't. And when I began to cooperate with Holy Spirit, my God, he helped me to carve this thing out that you see that I've done. Hey, Shabbat. I did not do it by might or power. I did it by the Holy Ghost. I did it by the Holy Spirit. Not by might, not by power. And I know that some of you are parents and you are, you, you are very into education and amen for that. But some of your children don't have the Holy Ghost. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your, your young men, your young sons, my God, my God, education is good in its place, but it will never replace the Holy Spirit. My God. God, in the name of Jesus, it will never, they don't have the Holy Spirit. And, and Peter said on the day of Pentecost that this promise is for you and your children. They don't have the Holy Ghost. That's why they're doing what they're doing. And that's why they're being drawn away to things. We must allow our children to know about Holy Spirit much earlier. Glory to God. We've got to get Holy Spirit in our children's church. We've got to get Holy Spirit in our nursery. We've got to get Holy Spirit in our preschools, in our churches. Our children need the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Glory to God. And then he doesn't leave out the old folk. He said, even though you're old, my God, you'll still dream. I'll still deal with you. Glory to God. <laughs> Oh, God, hallelujah. Holy Spirit is amazing. He said, I am the architect of your dreams and I'm the architect of dreams and visions. I'm the architect of dreams and visions. <laughs> Hallelujah, because see God has a design for us. Go over to 1 Corinthians right quickly. Glory to God, oh my God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And then I'm gonna share something with you because it, even as you begin to age, as you begin to age, you say, oh, Lord, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting, you know, over, over in the 70s. I looked up, I said, good Lord, all my friends are 60s and 70s. Oh, what happened? <laughs> we were just 30. But it, but Holy Spirit is timeless. Mm. Woo, glory to God. Holy Spirit is timeless. He, 
He, he, he renews our, our youth. He renews our strength. Somebody said to me the other day, they said, Bishop, you're going backwards in age. <laughs> That's Holy Ghost. The more I know the Holy Spirit, the more the more joy, the the the, 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 the more youthful, the, the more engaged I am. Glory to God to life. How it's not me, it's not me, it's the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It, it's not the vitamins, it's not the uh the, the things I do, my exercise, it's none of that. It's all Holy Spirit. It's Holy Spirit. You're not too old. You're not too young to, to start a revolution. Stop treating your dreams like they're just dreams. Your dream could be a revolution. Listen to me. Holy Spirit said something to me yesterday that he never said to me before. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah! Holy Spirit said to me, and I and I wrote it. I put it on Facebook, and I've never said this before. Woo! Glory to God! And some of you, you think I'm forty or fifty? No, listen. <laughs> but He's still carving out. He's still. He's still. That he's the architect of dreams and visions. Ah, yes, yes, yes. You're not too old. You're not too young. Holy Spirit will still, and you'll look and say, how in the world I'm going to do that? You know, with my lifespan, you know, a 90, 95, 100, praise God, 110, 120, you know, <laughs> don't want to be feeble. You know, I don't want to be weak. How am I going to do all this? He said, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God by my spirit. And he said something to me. And I said, wow, look at 1 Corinthians chapter number two. He said, Paul said, uh, my speech and my preaching, you all know, was, was not with persuasive words, uh, but uh, of human wisdom, but in demonstration of Holy Spirit and power. And I think we always think that that's just signs and wonders. But there are some areas that God wants you and I to invade. There are some things that God wants us to put in the earth on his behalf. There are some things that the Spirit of the Lord, if you will listen to him, if you will live this Pentecost lifestyle, there are some things that Holy Spirit is creating and carving out for you and I to live in the earth realm. And you have to do it by the Spirit. He will speak to you. He will, he will, he will open your ears. Say, open my ears, Holy Spirit. He will open your ears to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. And it's according to the power that works in us. And the power that works in us is Holy Spirit. That's the power that works in us. It's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Oh, Rabba Shekaba. Oh, Mama, my Sikaba, Oh, my God. I want you to know that there are some great things that God has in store for you that you have not yet done yet. You have not yet accomplished. You have not yet achieved and even may not have even heard it because Holy Spirit gives progressive revelation. <laughs> Hallelujah. You said, but I'm this, I'm this, I've been on job. It doesn't matter. Holy Spirit is timeless. It's timeless. It's he's timeless. Mm. Look at what he says here. He says, uh, he says, and this is the thing. He says, but we speak a wisdom of God in mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of our glory. <laughs> As it is written, you know this, but let me just break it down the way the Holy Spirit broke it down for me. I'm talking about after the day of Pentecost. I'm, you, you're thinking too small. You're thinking way too small. You're thinking too little. You're thinking about your life predicated on you, but you're not living the life of the Spirit predicated on the Holy Spirit. And he says that I have not seen nor ear heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those that love him. Now, come on. I want, I, I, I got to pray for you right here. I, I, got to, I got to release this on you right now. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. I got to release this on you right now. I, I, come on. Let's share this. Let's get people on. Let's get even more on because I want people to understand how vital this is. He says, I have not seen nor ear heard, <laughs> nor has it entered into the heart of man, 
the good things or the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Ah, hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yes, God. So we've been releasing our seed. We've been releasing our $7 seed. We've been releasing that $7 seed and you can cash at me at Corletta Vaughn or you can PayPal me. It doesn't matter. But when, as we begin to release the seed, I, I, I firmly believe that as we begin to release that $7 seed, glory to God, I believe that then the opening up of our eyes, our spiritual eyes, I believe that you have to give something to receive something. I believe that. But listen to what he says, and I'm going to pray for you right here. He says, the things which God has prepared for those who love him, it has not even entered into your mind. It has not even entered into your heart yet. You are focused on your flesh. You are focused on your little light. You are focused on your rejection. You are focused on your abandonment. You're fo this is how you get into mental health issues because you're focusing on the wrong things. You are focusing on the hurt. You're focusing on the mistake. You're focusing on the decision, the regret. You have remorse, you have offense, you have anger, you have all of these things. You're focusing on the wrong things. Holy Spirit will reveal to you and I the things that God has prepared for us that we don't even know. God, oh my, oh God, Holy Spirit, open us up. Holy, Holy Spirit, open us up. Holy Spirit, open us up to this. Glory to God in the name, Lord Jesus. You think that you have missed time. You think that you have missed your moments. You think that, no, 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 everything is synchronized and timed, but you got to tap in to Holy Spirit. You've got to tap in to life in the Spirit. It starts with the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Hallelujah, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When you start there and you receive power, glory to God, power when you receive that power. Now that's the beginning of a life in the Spirit. That's the beginning. That's not the end. That's a means to an end. And he says that you, glory to God, hallelujah, I have never seen. Your ear, never. Let me tell you what the Lord said to me. I never heard this before. I never heard it until yesterday. That's why I know that the continuation of the Holy Spirit, it never stops. It's perpetual. It's timeless. Glory to God. And some of you are going to receive even today, this week. Some of you are going to receive this month. Some of you are going to receive this year. Something that's going to be deposited, a dream, a vision, a revolution that you never, ever imagined. Glory to God. So the Holy Spirit began to talk to me. And I, 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 and I said, wow. And I couldn't believe that he said that. And I wrote it down. I, I sealed it in writing. And I know it's Holy Spirit. I know he has to do it. But I know that he was, I know he is architecting. He was designing something that I'm just now at the point in my life that he wants me to do. And I wrote it down. A Pentecostal Bible college and seminary for women. And I sat back, I said, what? This was just yesterday. Do you know how old I am? I said, Holy Spirit, what? He said, a Pentecostal Bible college and seminary for women only. Hey, Shabbat. Oh, Bishop. <laughs> I said, what? Your grace. I said, what? He said, a Pentecostal Bible college and seminary for women only. Holy Spirit, it has not yet been revealed to you what he is designing for you to accomplish. You don't have a clue. But as long as you try to fulfill the lust of your flesh and your littleness, I said, what, God? What? You think that your physical, your, your cultural, your background, you think that's going to stop Holy Spirit from using you to leave a mark on your generation? No, it will not. As a matter of fact, 
it makes you even more likely candidate because you got jacked up, because you got abused, because you got hurt, because your heart is broke, because you, your marriage failed, because of those things. It makes you even a greater candidate. Your body is sore and your health may be failing. It makes you a greater candidate. See, because the Holy Spirit is wanting to be glorified so that he can glorify Jesus. So he doesn't want to use all your strengths and all your this and all your that. He wants to do it. He wants to do it through us. He said, eyes have not seen, nor ear have heard. It hasn't even entered into your heart right now. This was yesterday. This is June 2018. Some of you will hear this in the morning, in the evening. Some of you will hear this in the days and weeks and months to come. But I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is the architect of dreams and visions and it has not yet even entered into your heart what god is going to do in your life you don't even know yet how great how great glory to god you don't even know yet and you're focused on your mistakes and your littleness and your smallness so i keep asking the question have you really received the holy spirit since you believe <laughs> you want to focus on that or you going to, I said, what did you say? He said, and he didn't ask me. He just dropped it. He just downloaded it. I release a download to you now in the mighty name of Jesus from the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, he dropped it in me yesterday, a Pentecostal Bible college and seminary for women only. I said, what? I said, wait a minute. I said, Holy Spirit, that's you. See, what you gotta, what you've got to be able to do is not miss when the Holy Spirit is telling you stuff. Glory to God. See, you're missing it because it's so big. <laughs> it's so amazing. It's you, it's gigormous. Nobody who has received Jesus and who is walking with the Spirit of God, who has had an upper room experience, is supposed to be little, not supposed to be minimum. <laughs> He's dropping dreams and visions. And, and, and one thought could be a revolution. One little thought could start a movement. Ah, yeah. But you, you minimize it and, and, and you, allow, you allow your mistakes and your weaknesses to cover over what Holy Spirit is saying to you because you know you don't have the strength. I know I don't have the strength to do that. I know I do not have the strength to do that, but I heard him when he said a Pentecostal Bible college and seminary for women only. I said, oh my God. I said, Holy Spirit, yes, help me to do it. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Lift your hands and say, Holy Spirit, download to me dreams and visions. Download to me dreams and visions. I don't want to be ordinary. I don't want to be little. I don't want to be small. I don't want to be normal. The Holy Ghost is more than you jumping and shouting in church. He wants to change the world. He wants to change the culture. But he needs those of us who are willing to be led by the Spirit of God. I said, oh my God, what has Holy Spirit been saying to you? What is it that he has been whispering to you and you keep putting him off because you say, I don't have the time or I don't have the resources or I don't have the ability or people don't like me. Okay, see, that's what the devil wants you to get stuck. He wants you to get stuck. So what if people don't like you? Maybe they don't like you. It may be a reality, but Holy Spirit will carve out in you a dream and vision. Glory to God. It ain't about if people like you. It's not about any of those things. Holy Spirit is the architect 
architect of dreams and visions. And it's never too late for him to drop something in you that can change the world, that can change the economy, that can change technology, that can change religion, that can change the culture, that can change banking, that can change education. It's never too late for the Holy Spirit to drop a movement in your mind, to drop one thought in your mind, one idea in your mind that will change music, that will change the way we do math, the way we do English, the way we read, the way we learn languages, the way we do government, the way we write policy. All you need is an intimacy with the Holy Spirit. I know Shabanda, he's looking for people that he can entrust with God's mind, with dreams and visions to change your generation. I said, oh my God, Shabaya. I said, oh my God, you may be sitting there right now, aching in your body. You may be sitting there right now. You can't even pay your water bill, but I'm here to tell you that the Holy Spirit can drop an idea and can drop a vision in your mind today that will change the world, that will change life as we now know it. Yes, God. And so verse 10 says, since we can't see it with our eyes and we cannot hear it with our ears, and since it's not revealed in our normal mind, God will reveal it by his Holy Spirit. Woo. But look at the next part. For the Holy Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. I don't want to be ordinary. <laughs> I don't want to be small. <laughs> Somebody said, well, Bishop, you don't, you don't ever get tired. I said, I don't know if that's the truth or not. I'm just telling you that life in the spirit, life after Pentecost, life after the event, life in the day is always fun. It's always moving. It's always motion. It's always great. It's, you're always being impregnated. You're always doing something. God bless you, Bishop Rock. I love you, man. My neighbor, my brother. God, you are an innovator. My God, make me, make me a Holy Spirit. Get one idea, one idea, one idea, one dream, one vision. He said, I am the architect. I, the Holy Ghost, am the architect of dreams and visions and our intimacy and reliance on the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. Glory to God. That's why I speak in tongues because I'm building myself up. See, it starts in the upper room. It starts with knowing who Jesus is. And then you go to the upper room and my God, when you get there, Holy Spirit infuses you with the light of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> and at this late thing in my life or what I think is late, when I think it's late, I, I, I've been, listen, I was a PhD candidate, a PhD student at Regent University. And let me just tell you how the Holy Spirit works. And I, I just couldn't get, I just couldn't get it. I, I, I just, I, 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 I couldn't get it. I, I'm not a good online student. Mm -mm. I need to be in a classroom. I need to see the teacher. I, I don't want to do all that. I need to talk. I need to hear. I'm visual, so I need to be there. I don't like being locked up with a computer. I know, I, and I'm, I'm not mad about that for y'all. I'm just talking about me, how the Holy Spirit wires me. And so I, I, I've been banging at it, and it just, it just wasn't what I wanted. And so I was driving down the street the other day. I'm telling you, somebody's going to get Somebody's going to get blessed by this. <laughs> Somebody, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm driving down the street the other day. Somebody is always oh, not over. It's not over. Care how old you are, how hurting you are. How, it doesn't matter. So I'm driving down the street. I said, Lord, I said, I don't like Regent University. I don't like the, the degree plan. I don't like it. I don't want to do nothing else in ministry or theology. I, I got those degrees and I praise God that early on the Lord allowed me to do it long before the demon was popular, long before the, all that was popular. Thank the Lord. He took me that way. I said, but God, I don't want to do this now. What do you want me to do? I thought maybe it was organizational this. Or I thought it was this, that, and the other. And I just pulled over one day. I was so frustrated. I just pulled my car and said, Holy Spirit. What do you want me to do with this education? Because I know that the doctorate, 
degree. I don't know if it's the PhD, the EDD, because the D man, I know that that helped me to do ministry. But God, I'm bigger than that. I'm bigger than that. What is it that you want me to do? And the Holy Spirit said, apply to ORU. Now, I did a master's there in 07 in post-secondary uh, administration. So I'd already done that because I don't know, the Lord said for you to do, for whatever the reason, the Holy Spirit said do. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, he said very clear, see, if you talk to him, he'll tell you, he'll guide you. He said, reapply, go back to your alma mater, go back, you're an alumni, go back, go back and do the EDD. This is in February of this year. And so I said, okay, this is January. This, and so in February, it's going toward the end of February, I said, okay. Now, as, 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 as simple as that was, I still didn't understand it. But Holy Spirit, see, I'm, I'm trying to teach y'all how to live after the day of Pentecost. And so he said, okay. So I came in and I started calling my, you know, all the people that I needed to call. And I went through all the steps and I had to write all these essays and all of that. And so get, you know, all my courses transferred from region and everything. And I just, I just, I just wasn't hitting it. And the Holy Spirit said, go back. And I said, okay. And so guess what? So after we went through, went through and they had some faculty changes and then from February until yesterday, and I got my letter of acceptance. And I said, okay, Holy Spirit, you're working on it. Praise God. And then later on in the day, just Holy Spirit began to say to me, Pentecostal Bible College and Seminary for Women Only. I said, that's why you want me to have the EDD, not the PhD. Let me tell you something. Holy Spirit is so detailed. He is so accurate. He is so detailed. You don't have to wonder. You don't have to try to figure this out. He is the architect. He is the designer. Oh, Rabbi, he done my sake, Baba. He is the architect. He is the designer, Hillary. He is the architect. Come on, Chris. I'm up on my feet. Oh, yes, God. Talk to the Holy Spirit, Crystal. He will respond right there to you. I want you to pause right now and say, Holy Spirit. Spirit, give me the details. Uh, hallelujah. Give me the details. Uh, invade my thoughts with the details. Rushaba, ikonda mande sabana. Ruba baba shekaba. Talk to the Holy Spirit. He will talk back to you. Uh, yeah, he is so detailed. He is so precise. He has all of the information you go into this prophet and that prophet and you go into this service and all they can give you is a word but the holy ghost he will give you the uh, the plans he'll give you the full plan he's the architect of dreams and visions he will give you the details he will give you the specifics he will give you everything you need to know but you have got to start talking to him you got to start listening to him you've got to start inquiring of him you have got to begin to engage him in your everyday life holy spirit you are welcome here holy spirit Ah, nah, somebody just stop right there. Oh, gross, Shabbat. He is detailed. Oh, my God. He is detailed. Oh, Rabbi, he is detailed. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. He keeps you current. He keeps you relevant. He keeps you from stakes being stuck in the past. He, I, listen, people, this year I'll be 65. It's unbelievable for me to even say it. And now you tell me at 64 and a half that you want a Holy Ghost. Listen to me. Bible college and seminary for women only. You dropped it out of nowhere. He dropped it out of nowhere. I hadn't thought about it. I hadn't planned on it. But Holy Spirit knows what God needs in the earth. He's just looking for a few good men and a 
filled with women uh, that will give birth, uh, that will give birth, uh, that he will overshadow, that will give birth, not to your dream, uh, not to your vision, but to the dream of God for your life. And that's where we mess up. You want the Holy Spirit to birth your stuff, but you don't want to birth God's stuff. I want you to say this with me. Holy Spirit, download. Download to me. I'm sorry that I've been ignoring you. I'm sorry that I haven't paid attention to you. I'm sorry that I thought that was me. I thought I was too little. I thought I was too broke. I thought I was too old. I thought I was too black, too white, too female. I thought I was too queer. I thought I was too. I thought I could never do it. But Holy Spirit, <laughs> hey God, if this is you <laughs> downloading, I don't just want the day of Pentecost. I want a life of Pentecost. I want to do exactly what you want me to do while I'm here. I said, oh my God. I said, Lord, I said, give me the grace to do it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Not your dreams. Not your visions, but he wants to download an idea, an innovation. He wants to download a revolution. He wants to download something that will change the way the world is going right now. And all he needs is a few folk. Glory to God. That will be open to him. That will love him so much. Oh, my God. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He wants to do that through you and through me. He wants to do that. Holy Spirit, download. You think you got it. You ain't got it. You got to hear the download. It's so big. It's bigger than what you can ask or think. It's so much bigger than what you can ask or think. It's nothing you can ask, think, or even imagine. The Holy Ghost, the Bible says, he has to reveal it to you because he searches the deep things of god glory to god hallelujah the reservoirs in my news there are reservoirs for you there are re not rivers there are reservoirs hallelujah there are reservoirs you're living too little. You're doing things too little, too small. They're nice. They're good. But they're not amazing. He wants to do things through us. Holy Spirit didn't just come upon those folk in the upper room and put COVID tongues of fire on their heads and do those great mighty sounds and signs just for them to be ordinary. Oh, Rabba Baba Basata, Robo Sheba Bahaya, Miki Soto Bahaya, Robo Boshikaba, Hanadi Asata. Right now, Holy Ghost, right now, Holy Ghost, right now, Holy Spirit, right now, Holy Spirit, right now, Holy Spirit. I'm telling you from this day forward, from this day forward, I'm, I'm asking the Holy Spirit to interrupt your life, to interrupt your life. You are too normal you are too regular you are too listen listen and it is not gonna make you crazy but it's gonna make you so wise it's gonna make you so wise so authentic you're gonna be amazing for god you are going to be amazing i don't care what you went through i'm telling you the holy spirit does not want you to focus on the lust of your flesh and i know with the mental health i know all of those people i'm telling you holy ghost stuff today i'm not telling you clinical stuff i'm a practitioner of the holy ghost i'm telling you what the holy spirit desires for you and you think it's over no you think it's too late no you think your past is going to prevent no you think you've aborted it no you think that can't no can't ain't, can't nobody use you not no 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 listen to me i rebuke that voice i command that sound to stop in your ear and i command you to stop giving that sound power in your life in the name of the Lord Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will now quicken your mind, 
and quicken your mortal mind. Roba I said, my God. Ooh, Shebabaha. I said, my God. Interrupt me. I said, God, if that's what you want me to do, I'll do it. Now I gotta go to work. I gotta get the degree. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do the courses. Oh, Sheba. But if you said it, you'll give me the grace. Hi, y'all. One of my bishop brothers, he said, how in the world are you going to do with everything else you're doing? I said, I don't know, but the Holy Ghost said to do it. And if the Holy Ghost said to do it, it ain't about money. It ain't about time. It's about me being obedient to the Spirit of God. For they that are led by the Spirit, we are the sons of God. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, interrupt you're too normal you're too normal you're too regular you are too normal and i want you to sow that seed i want you to stop sitting on that seed you hear me i want you to stop sitting on that seed and i want you to release i want you to i want you to release that seven dollars right now i want you to either go to paypal praise i'm just talking seven dollars it's not about the amount it's your obedience it's your obedience you want these, you want this, you need this, I need this. And let me tell you something, God needs it. He needs us. He needs us to birth these things in the earth. God cannot do things in the earth except he do it through us. Spirit-led, spirit-filled, spirit-obedient men and women, boys and girls, that's what he's looking for. Lay your hands on your head right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, receive the doubt. <laughs> I received the download. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> it's not too late. You're not too sick. You're not too broke. You're not too black. You're not too white. You're not too, you're not forsaken. You're not forgotten. You're, you're trying to live out your days normal. No, not with the Holy Spirit, for he searches the deep things of God. This is the Pentecostal life. This is the Pentecostal life. This is Pentecost. <laughs> what is God wanting of you? What, what dream, what vision is he getting ready to download to? You don't know it yet. It's not on your vision board. <laughs> it's not what you cut out. No, it's what he's going to download to you. You may be in the area of it, but it's what he's going to download to you. Oh, to make his name glorious. <laughs> Every Wednesday I'm here. Would you go ahead? Hallelujah. I want you to go ahead and get that seed in the ground. You can cash at me at Corletta Vaughn. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's just $7. Cash at it. Corletta Vaughn, $7, my God. Or you can go to go tell it. Hallelujah. Uh, and that's forward slash donate. Uh, glory to God. You can do that now in the name of Jesus. Get that seed in the ground right now. Glory to God. And I release the supernatural life of the Holy Spirit. I release that to you now. It's the greatest life you can ever live. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's the greatest life you can ever, ever live. Is a Pentecostal Holy Ghost life. <laughs> I'll see you next week. I love y'all so much. <laughs> Would you please promise to share this? Would you please promise to share it all through the day on your timelines? There's so many people that think that their life and their choices and their decisions have bound them to a life of mediocrity and nothingness. But life in the Holy Ghost, it's an amazing life. And it has nothing to do with your temperament. It has nothing to do with your personality. Holy Spirit will do a takeover and he will take you places that you could not even dream you would go. <laughs> Ooh, now, let's become more aware of his presence. Let's become more aware of his voice. Let's be more obedient. Let's, not, let's be quicker to respond to him from today. I don't know what he told you last week. I'm not dealing with that. But from today, from this moment forward, the download of the Holy Spirit is going to surprise you because he is the architect of dreams and visions. <laughs> oh, I love him so much. Holy Spirit, we love you. Glorify Jesus in our lives. We love you so much. Hallelujah. Help me to become more aware of your presence. Help me to become more aware and more sensitive to your voice. And thank you. Thank you so much. I'll do whatever you ask of me. 
I'll do it, Lord. I'll do it. Mm. Glory to God. I love y'all. God bless. We'll see you next week. Every Wednesday, 6 a.m. Eastern, we'll be right here. And if you'll share this, somebody will see it tonight. Somebody will see it tomorrow. Just remember, just say it all day. The Holy Spirit is the architect of dreams and visions. I love y'all. The peace of the Lord is with you.